every virtual event, Storytelling for Social Change with Tiara Productions. I'm Caroline Chang. I'm the Arts Program Manager at LA County Library, and I'll be your moderator today. Uh, this program is held in partnership with LA County Department of Mental Health. Following the program, you will receive an email from us with a link to a survey about your experience here today. So we'd greatly appreciate it if you could take the time to complete that for us. So moving on with today's event, I'd like to introduce Tiara Productions founding artistic director Leilani Chan and co-artistic director Ova Sapeng, who will present a conversation and excerpts from their works, Theater Across Borders, Resilient Migrant, created in collaboration with Los Angeles-based Program for Torture Victims, and Masters of Currents, the first touring play about Micronesians in the United States. Uh, so please welcome Leilani and Ova. Aloha, Sabaidi and Ola. You know, how's it? <laughs> we are so honored and glad to be invited by the uh, LA County Library to share, you know, the wonderful work that we do as theater artists. Uh, thank you for tuning in with us uh, with the eagerness to learn and discover because this program is about discovery. You know, um, more about who we are, what Tira is, and our process in creating devised ensemble and community based theatrical works, what we call our Tira methodology. I'm Ova Saopang, and this is my creative partner in uh, amazing, incredible, fierce, and funny partner in life and art. Leilani Chan. Aloha. <laughs> and we are Tiara Productions. And I am going, and we're going to let Ova take the first half of this, and then I'm going to take the second half uh, because this is Zoom and it's better with one person on the camera. So I'm going <laughs> to hand it off to Ova. I'll be back when he's done. Awesome. I'm right here. <laughs> Thank you, Leilani. All right. So, <clears throat> you know, we come to you uh, from the land of the, the Tongva San Gabrielino. Um, Kish people, the land that they call Tovangar, otherwise known as Los Angeles, California. And we acknowledge the first peoples of the land we stand on as non-indigenous people to this land. So please join us by sharing in the chat, which I believe you have uh, functions to, um, which lands you are tuning in from. And if you do not know, we provided a link to encourage you to discover more about the history of the land you inhabit. So let's, yes, occupy Tongva land. Beautiful, thank you. Look at that, Hawaii, how's it, how's it? You know, so glad to have so many people zooming in from all over the place. Let's ground ourselves because that's what we do in Tierra when we work with uh, our communities. Let's ground ourselves today and to prepare ourselves to take a, and so let's all, wherever you are right now, take a collective breath in together, okay? From wherever you're calling from, uh, zooming in from, from Pauva'a, Oahu, you got, you got all the, you, oh, look at this. You got, we got so many people from all over the place. This is wonderful, wonderful. Nakada and Blackfoot Nations, Canada, hoo hoo, all the way across the border on the other side. So let's ground ourselves. Here we are in the present moment together through this thing called uh, this virtual world. So let's all breathe in and breathe out. And breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in together and breathe out together our collective breaths all together from different parts of the world through this medium. Um, you know, in doing so, we hope to spark courageous conversations within your own family, your own neighborhood, deep listening and integrate creative exploring because that is the essence of the Tierra methodology. And that's the essence of our company, Tierra Productions. It's a space and a place where we welcome all people. So Tiara is Hawaiian pidgin or the local slang dialect 
that means theater. Hey, we're gonna check out the theater. We're gonna see what they're doing over there. Those funny people, those characters, those actors. So both Leilani and I have roots in Hawaii. And in the place where we grew up, became a foundation that we can carry with us to this day. Theater Productions is a nomadic theater of color, rooted in the stories of immigrants and refugees. I myself am a refugee from Laos. We have been in existence for 25 years in Los Angeles. Woo! That's a long time. Uh, we are artists that elevate and highlight the issues that face immigrants and refugees, a community that is full of diverse and really wide ranging cross cultural intersections. You know, we've developed work nationally with the Lao American refugee communities, both in uh, California as well as in uh, Minnesota, creating a work called Refugee Nation. And it is a play about the Lao diaspora of post Vietnam War era impact. We've interviewed Somali and Ukrainian, uh, Ecuadorian, and many other immigrants in Global Taxi Driver exploring the taxi driving industry because that's one of the first jobs that many immigrants when they come to this country have to do no matter what position they held back in their home country uh, and this was even before uh you know the taxi industry this was before the the ride sharing economy and when it was booming so that really was a big interesting shift and our current work right now is masters of the currents a play that shines light on the people from the Pacific region of Micronesia who are facing racism in Hawaii. We are a theater that centers the work around the people, for the people, and with the people. Today, I want to share with you our Los Angeles. So as I mentioned this, Caroline, Caroline will uh, share another uh, screen and slideshow as she uh, prepares. But we work locally and nationally. We're based in Los Angeles, but we have a lot of work that we do in LA. So today I wanna to share with you our Los Angeles work that centers the stories and the plight of the many, many asylum seekers living in this urban jungle, This metropolis of LA. Now for the past few years, we have collaborated with an amazing organization, the Program for Torture Victims, or PTV for short, that serves asylees from all over the world. They come primarily from many regions, but primarily from Africa and Central America, uh, Eastern Europe, and parts of Asia. And in these collaborations, we welcome these people with wide open arms, welcoming them with the power, the power of the theater arts, teaching theater skills and facilitating workshops and presentations that explore their stories in a myriad of ways. As you can see, we play, we laugh, <laughs> we cry, and we tell stories. And then uh, this particular clip is one where they're, they're moving together as a flock, uh, as a community, new leader, one more new leader. and moving and shifting. Uh, and so that's kind of what happened. And so they're, they're, they're shifting and taking leadership. So everyone's kind of learning to be a leader, learning to be a follower, learning to work with each other. Um, so it's been pretty amazing to work with uh, so many wonderful, wonderful people from all over the world. Uh, we tell stories and we move stories and we draw stories and we dance stories and we even eat stories. <laughs> we create poetry and images and build connections together in a safe space. Uh, this is uh, one of our cycles of our, our work with PTV, and it's over at a church that houses uh, uh, asylees. Uh, there's one particular story I want to share with you in this clip is that there's the, the gentleman right in the middle. Is he, 
came all the way from Cameroon and he took this workshop with us and at first he was razzled but after a first week with us by the end of the week he felt so welcome and he felt so grounded it was just so wonderful to see the transformation and the healing that came for him just through our process now these program cycles explore many themes from connections to the uh, the far off homeland that many of them come from, the treacherous and traumatic journeys leading to the stories of assimilation and adaptation to American life and all its complexities and complications, to cultural misunderstandings, to honoring one's own resilience and ancestry and power. And that's you know, that's just amazing to see the power that we have as people to tell our stories through using our voice, our body, and our imagination. And that's what, in the Tira methodology, what we do is we teach that, we share that. <laughs> this is a wonderful exercise in which they have to fill in a space and they're kind of moving through. It's kind of glitchy, sadly, but that's just kind of how technology works. It's, it's more fun if you're there in the present moment. That's why I miss live theater. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, all, all these themes, right? They, 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 uh, they are, they sprout from the participants themselves. Now we as artists merely are the guide. We are the ones that show the way and offer tools and the skills that can, that we hope they can take with them and they can use to apply to other aspects of their lives. You know, building confidence, uh, public speaking. Uh, when you interview for a job, you need these skills. Uh, when you're, uh, you know, uh, going out, meeting other people, being willing and brave to say, hi, my name is Ova, I'm, I'm you know, I'm from Laos. Um, and so these are just some of the, the skills and you're seeing just samples from this slideshow of the various different exercises that we do. So we breathe in potential and possibilities and we breathe out, going back to the breathing again, healing and community. So in the slideshow you're viewing our photos of workshops and rehearsals and training of the cycles of work with PTV. Now, through this partnership, Tieta offers our web of LA artists, actors, writers, poets, playwrights, comedians, etc., you know, that embrace the mission to integrate social justice and awareness into our art. They get to learn and connect with PTV members through a fellowship program. And so that's why, as you're seeing these pictures, that's Carol right there. She's the director uh, of uh, PTV uh, and she's the one. And so these are some of our artists as well as our participants coming together and they're doing various different images and themes that come from the exercises. And so in this fellowship, you know, they go through a training process in which they learn theater skills and explore leadership and exchange stories and skills in a collective process. Now each person contributes in some form or another in creating and shaping a story a piece, a movement, and we have story circles and we learn from each other as well as the larger PTV membership. And we then take that material and that content that we collected and in one week, we have a intensive and that we play with that content, we explore and work with it and we weave a raw and rough presentation performance. And then we open it up to the public and giving the public and supporters and audiences an education on the issues that the community is dealing with uh, through an engaging and entertaining experience. And this is just some of the samples of the, the work that we've done live. The fellows and the participants get an opportunity in the practice, into practice, you know. It's been very, very powerful and fulfilling for me and Tiara, and all the participants that have been a part of it, the, the artists that we've worked with, the, the, the asylum seekers that we work with, uh, 
the program for torture victims, our partner organization. It's just been very, very fulfilling and healing. And, you know, in doing so, what we do is that we offer participants a sense that, that it makes them feel welcome. It makes them feel validated. And then they also feel like they belong. And that's what we all kind of search for to belong to something. You know, and Tira is about that. This is our Tira methodology. Express themselves freely without judgment. The ability to tackle courageous and difficult issues openly. The ability to validate each and every person and their uniqueness, but also observe the humanity that binds us. Our last round uh, of our partnership with PTV, uh, we were in a pandemic. And because of the pandemic, it really, personally for me, challenged me as a performing artist and a teacher to create work remotely and under extreme circumstances via like this, this thing here, this computer screen in what I call the Zoomosphere, because everyone was jumping into Zoom. Um, it was really rough, you know, and I think the pandemic personally for me really was an attack really on my life because this is, this is what I do. I gather people, I bring people together. I, 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 I live off of other people's energy when we work together in a room together collectively as an ensemble. Uh, and I'm so proud to say that, I mean, it, it was rough, but what I learned was in the end to improvise and use the skills that I have built up and adapt as all creative and imaginative and resilient people do. And that's what we are, we're resilient. So in this last round, here's a short piece. So I'm gonna ask Caroline to stop um, the, the, the cycle of the slideshow. And I wanna share with you now um, the final piece that I have uh, from our last round here with a uh, program for torture victims. So this one uh, was called Theater Across Borders, Resilient Migrant. And so we recorded it and this is an excerpt from it. So Caroline will now play it and enjoy the, the just the difference in terms of how things have had to be done. We cross these borders for social justice, for a better life, to escape political persecution, for the next generation to remain alive. We cross these borders to leave a suffocating family for personal progress, to grow, to see others for a different perspective. Close these borders. To expand, to create, for family to be responsible for ourselves. Close these borders. For better and positive future, to define new meaning in life, for love, cross these borders, to breathe, to control the things you can control, because we had no choice, to cross these borders. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. You're awesome. So Caroline's been, you know, dealing with the technical aspects of uh, this new thing called WebEx that, uh, you know, it's new to us. <laughs> But thank you, that was wonderful. Uh, that piece is an excerpt from our, our recent uh, presentation and it's called Theater Across Borders, Resilient Migrant. And 
as much as the pandemic was challenging, it was just amazing to be able to, the, the pros of having to connect via Zoom is that we can connect anywhere in the world, no matter what time, uh, time zone you are. And in that particular piece, we had uh, uh, one of our um, uh, fellows was actually in Hawaii, I think, or in another place in Hawaii, and we were here in Los Angeles. Uh, we also had a, 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 a one of our fellows, uh, Tita artist, um, Nicole Smith, who was based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So those are what the wonderful connections that we get to have. At the same time, it's it's just different. It's just very different, and but it's also challenging because of all these technical aspects that is very different from live theater. Um, and that in particular piece was wonderful because it really explored border crossings and. and crossing borders and it all came from the participants in uh, what I uh, an exercise that I created uh, that I had uh, in, uh, included called a uh, collective poem where everyone contributes. So that kind of concludes my section of today's presentation. Um, it's amazing. Thank you program for church of victims for being our wonderful partner and we will be uh, doing our next cycle soon. Um, just keep up to date with us with Tira productions. And now I pass on to you, my lovely and amazing and fierce and funny partner in all aspects of my life, Lilani Chan. Hi, aloha everyone. Um, so I am gonna take us through a little bit about, um, to talking about our current Turing project called Masters of the Current, which was, as Ova mentioned, developed in Hawaii with the Micronesian community in Hawaii um, and has since gone on to tour nationally. I, we of course had to postpone the tours um, last year. Uh, so we will be hopefully crossing fingers touring again in the fall, uh, bringing Master of the Currents to USC and then to, um, to Salt Lake City, the University of Utah. Um, so I'm gonna start off by sharing um, a video uh, excerpt of the play, the first eight minutes of the show, just so that you get a sense of it. And then I'm gonna talk to you about the process and how we developed it and how, um, how the tour has been going. So let's see if this will, we can make this work. There is nothing micro about Micronesia. We have big families, we have big minds, and we have big hearts. Micronesia is a term some European explorer assigned to us on a map. But our people are more than just dots on a map. We've been given the big responsibility to steward the Pacific Ocean, the largest body of water on the planet Earth. Micronesia makes over 2,000 islands that span the Pacific. It is bigger than the U.S. continent. There is nothing micro about us! Micronesia is more than just the FSM, the Federated States of Micronesia, which includes Goshai, Pompei, Juke, and Yap, Mogeti. Micronesia stretches all the way from Palau on one end ali, ali, ali. to the Marshall Islands on the other. Hey, yo, boy. And there is also Saipan and Guam, Satawal and Nairu and Kiribati and all. Oh, too many islands to name. I could not name them all here. Our people are so diverse in language and in culture that when you ask us, are you Micronesian? You get this blank look. <laughs> because we would say we are Chinese. Or Koshayan. Or Marshallese. Or Bonbayan. And then we would say, hey, what island are you from? Lukuno. What up? Koshayan. Majuro. And what part of the island? Lukala. Dunuk. Melim. I don't know. 
<laughs> With all this beauty and pride, why would we leave our islands? Why would we leave our beautiful homes? We are masters of the currents, ocean navigators. It's in our blood to travel the globe. Yet we all yearn to return home. But nowadays, some of us cannot. For some of our islands are disappearing. Some of our islands have been destroyed by US nuclear bomb testing. In exchange, they offer us a COFA agreement, which promised us to rebuild, to educate, and to medicate. Broken promises. So we must leave. Micronesia to Hawaii are thousands of miles away. You can fly from Guam or Saipan, or you can island hop from Koshai to Ponte to Chuk, all the way to Honolulu, Hawaii. Now, in the old days, we would sail everywhere because the ocean is our highway. We would paddle from one island to the other in our canoes, just like this. Everybody ready? Paddles up. Amua! Nale! Amua! Nale! Amua! Nale! Amua! Nale! Salo! Salo! And we arrive in Hawaii. This is Eva. Hi! And this is Alan So. How's it? I was born and raised here in Hawaii, but my mom came from Kushai and my dad's from Point Bay. I was born in the Marshall Islands and I came to Hawaii when I was eight years old. Now, they're here because... Both my parents came here for jobs, college, but they stayed for my education. My mom and my grandfather needed medical treatment. And let me introduce you to Soso Fina. We call her also. She just arrived here from Chok. I mean, <clears throat> don't be shy. Come sit. You see, living in Hawaii is good fun. I live up in Papa Kolea, and every day after school, I play basketball, football, any kind, bro. Good fun. And you see, Hawaii is a whole lot better than wherever you came from. Because you see, whatever you like, you can get. Just go to the store and buy food, clothes. Medicine? Yeah, and medicine. In fact, you don't even have to wait a whole week to get it. And we have toilets inside the house. You don't have to. All you gotta do is You mean I don't have to paddle all the way to the mangrove in the middle of the night just to do my business? Ew. No. 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 And it's more sanitary. Oh, plus, we've got strong Wi-Fi. Watch this. <laughs> Whoa, that was fast. Oh, you see, you can never get bored here in Hawaii. I mean, there's so much to do. We have the mall. We even have McDonald's. This is like the go-to island. Oahu, specifically. All you got to do is just get on the bus and go just about anywhere. We call it San Antonius. Huh? All clans bus? Because everybody takes it. You see old people, young people? Chinese people, Japanese people, Howley people. Hawaiian, Samoan, Jungans? Everybody takes the bus. Oh, and so, so the best thing of all, oh, you're so gonna love school. Yeah! <laughs> Wait, what? No. Don't believe her, so so. School is boring. Uh, excuse me, Alonso. I love school. That's because you get good grades. Yeah, good to of you. Study. <laughs> One thing though, so so. Yes? Don't wear that shower curtains to school. Alonso! Shower curtain? He's talking about your skirt. <laughs> no! I have to take this with me! My grandmother made me made a fortune before I left our island. 
just don't do it if you don't want to get beat up. And another thing, Soso, -so, try working on your English. My suggestion, only speak English and never your island language. I mean, it is the only way to learn English fluently. And get good grades like Eva. Thanks, Alonso. You're welcome. Anyway, Soso, -so, I know you're going to do great. OK, I'll see you at school. Bye. And I got to meet up with the boys at the court, so shoot, get it. No worries, Miss Curry. Beef curry? <laughs> and minutes of our show. Um, and so I'm going to take you quickly through some um, background on how the show was developed, why we developed it, and where the show has been. Um, let's see. Okay, great. So, um, let's make sure. Whoops. It is 2021 and the water is rising. New Orleans, New York, Florida, Thailand. It is 2021 and the water is rising. Make no mistake about it. Climate change is here. While we can talk about global warming, melting glaciers, plastic straws, reduce, reuse, recycle. What does climate change really look like in places yet to be hit by a disaster? It looks like migration, mass migration. These are the people at the forefront of climate change. These are the first wave of climate refugees. This community has been arriving in increasing numbers from the small islands and atolls of the Pacific in a region called Micronesia. There are many reasons Micronesians have been coming to the US in increasing numbers. One is because of a post-World War II treaty called the COFA Agreement, in which the US promised to provide free access to educational opportunities and healthcare. In exchange, the US would have the privilege of military and economic exclusivity in the region and be able to test nuclear bombs on some of their islands. As a result of this over, this over 30 year old treaty with the US called the COFA Agreement, Micronesians have been plunged into poverty and an increase in serious health issues while having limited access to health care or economic opportunities in their own island countries. Meanwhile, the waters are rising and warming. Another thing you need to know about the Micronesian community is that they have been navigating the Pacific Ocean for centuries, long before Captain Cook ever found his way to Hawaii and Polynesia. This is Pokemao from Satawal, who is credited with reviving the indigenous practice of navigating the ocean using only the stars and the currents. I was born and raised in Hawaii and left after high school like many artists do because of opportunity for artists working outside the tourism industry. Uh, because opportunities for artists working outside the, inter, uh, the tourism industry is limited. On one of our trips back, Ova and I learned that there is a new community of Islanders and that they were going through similar experiences to what Southeast Asian refugees had gone through. Since Ova and I had been working with Southeast refugees, developing a theater piece called Refugee Nation, we thought we could kokua, give back to Hawaii and help as artists to find a way to tell these recent arrival stories. Early on in our process, Ina Senta Sound Kiku, our community navigator, invited us to lead a theater workshop with her Pacific Voices youth. We did our usual workshop, creating images and tableaus inspired by their own experiences. Every tableau that the kids created included dead bodies and guns. So I asked them, wait, wait, wait a minute, is this from real life or from a movie? And they all said, real life, it happened just outside in the parking lot. This is Kuhio Park Terrace, also known as KPT, where Pacific Voices is located. KPT is the largest housing project in Hawaii. At 
Ina Center Pacific Voices, the youth are able to learn and retain their heritage. Without Eno, this project, Masters of the Currents, would never have been possible. When we began our story gathering workshops, we weren't sure if we would find actors of Micronesian descent to play the roles for the touring productions. Our approach to every workshop was to find ways to make the participants feel they belonged. This meant throwing with throwing away some of the things we hold on to as trained professionals. If we're going to, if we're asking these community members to share their stories with us and that our play was going to be based on their story, then stories, then they were the experts, not us. Over the next three years, we continued teaching these workshops with various community groups and gatherings in Hawaii. The title of our show, Masters of the Currents, comes from a quote made by this elder, Tamana Poli. We were once master navigators of the currents. Now we are slaves to the US dollar. After many more story circles, workshops with, within Kalihi Valley, we had two community sharings in 2016 and 2017 that involved over 30 participants performing. Uh, we also work with the Honolulu Theater for Youth and T-Shirt Theater Ensemble. Both were pivotal in helping us develop this work. And we had the pleasure of having the Pacific Voices Youth perform their traditional warrior stick dance for us at the being, opening of our shows. In 2017, uh, we finally were able to put together the cast. Uh, when it finally came time to audition for the touring production, we were able to cast four of the five roles with Micronesian actors who had been part of the process, including our cultural navigator, Ina Senta. After it premiered for schools at the Honolulu Theater for Youth, we then toured to, the other, to, to other islands, including Maui and Hilo, and then to the continent, uh, to San Francisco and Minneapolis. I could tell you a, a community impact story for each location that we went to, but I want to fast forward to our tour to Minneapolis in 2018, which was our last tour. Uh, and when we went to Minneapolis, we were trying to figure out where in the world are the Micronesians. And it turned out that there is currently a growing Chickies community in Milan, Minnesota, which is three hours outside Minneapolis, where Pangea World Theater uh, was presenting us. How in the world were we going to get these folks to come three hours into the city to see a play? These are indigenous professors at the University of Minnesota who connected us to what uh, Professor Vince affectionately calls the Milanesians. Uh, he is doing incredible work around traditional navigational practices, um, maintaining navigation practices uh, for the Micronesian community, but also connecting with the indigenous peoples of um, the Twin Cities and the surrounding lakes um, to, to trade in uh, this knowledge. When the cast arrived, we all piled into a minivan and a car uh, to drive out to Milan, Minnesota. We had no idea if any of the community members would show up, uh, but we went and we pulled, after the long drive, we pulled down an empty road toward what looked like a gym. And sure enough, standing outside were a lot of Chickies, pe uh, people in Chickies skirts. The whole, whole community was turning out. As a result, we did a supersized theater workshop in a gym. It was like theater games arena style. And then we did a 10 minute excerpt of the show for about 300 Chickies people. And it's a, it was much like the excerpt we just shared. I even got to sell some t-shirts from the back of the minivan, which made me feel very hip hop. 
and cool. <laughs> um, driving back to Minneapolis, we just hoped they could find a way to see the full show. And lucky, lucky for us, someone sponsored a bus so that the Milanesians could come to see the show. Now, I could go on about how awesome the show is because it is, but I know you all are gonna come and see the show when it comes to your city, uh, whether it's Los Angeles, uh, Salt Lake City, or we'll actually be back in Hawaii in May for the National Asian American Theater Conference and Festival. Um, and here are some shots of the beautiful um, staging by my yours truly, since I was the director, and incredible video projections uh, um, by uh, Joan Osato and Nathan. What's our name? What's Nathan's last Fitch. name? Finch. Finch. Fitch. Nathan Fitch. Um, And we have, this is uh, Emerald Rose, Haddock. These are the beautiful ladies, Innocenta San Kiku and Jaceleen Ifnik. Um, and this is a picture of one of our guys, Mike. And of course, Jermaine, who came with us to San Francisco and Minneapolis. Um, but I wanna tell you a story about this particular production in Minneapolis, in addition to the Milanesians coming to see the show, Professor Vince invited us during Tech Week to join him in the canoe. And if you're a theater person, you know that Tech, tech Week is sacred and we spend all our time in the theater. But the opportunity to get in a Micronesian canoe in the Mississippi River was just too much for any of us to pass up. So we arranged to get meet uh, Professor Vince Diaz at the river. He had brought a traditional Micronesian canoe that was built in Guam to Minneapolis as part of the University of Minnesota Department of American Indian Studies Navigation Program. So we absolutely took a break from tech to paddle in a traditional Polowak canoe from the Pacific Ocean in the Mississippi River. We got to share this experience with our presenters, Pangea, uh, World Theater, artistic directors, Mina and Dipankar. And we got to actually practice some of the chants that we do in the show, which are of course much easier to chant on stage than they are in an actual canoe when you have to paddle together. Uh, when we began this journey, I had no idea that this might be one of the places that it took us to, to be in a traditional Micronesian canoe with Micronesian cast members in the Mississippi River. So with that, I wanted to share a quick of uh, excerpt of how the Milanesian community thanked us uh, after our performance.
just watching that brings back so many happy memories of live performances. Um, and I also just want to going back to like how we as theater artists are challenged by working with communities in, in a really great, great way. Um, we, you know, for I think about I watched that performance and, you know, at the top of a lot of theater shows, you know, the introduction usually starts off with turn off your cell phones. Um, also, bringing your babies to a theater show, you know, usually that's looked down upon, but with our productions, we know that we're often the first play that that this community is going to see where their own community, where they know their, their story and their experience and their faces will be the first time they've ever seen their story told on stage in the form of theater. Um, they want to bring their whole family, even if they're going to bring their babies. So I think if you could hear in the video, there were babies in all of the performances because we were not going to turn anyone away. And we wanted this to be a multi generational experience. We want all of our shows to be a multi generational experience. Um, so these are some of the things that we um, embrace instead of condone. Even when you know there's a lot of rules around not videotaping live performances, um, at that particular production, the entire um, back row of guys pulled out their video cameras, and we were in the tech booth. I could easily have told them put it away, but this was their first theater experience, and we knew that if they were pulling out their phones to document it, it was a very very large compliment. And not only that, they were probably broadcasting it to their family friends in Micronesia or elsewhere in the world. So we were getting an international free broadcasting from these folks and we weren't about to tell them to put their phones away. We, we just took it as a huge compliment. So I just want to remind you that um, we're going to have a few minutes at the end uh, in a few minutes to have answer any questions that you have from every, anything I presented or always presented. I have about one more minute of video to share with you, which is basically a trailer and overview of Masters of the Current and our upcoming productions. Um, so please, while you're watching this, go ahead and add to the chat any questions that you have. And this is a final one minute or so video. <laughs> And that is it for our presentation. We're looking at questions. Yes, we do have. Thank you for that. That was really wonderful. Um, we do have our first question in the chat. Um, what are some of the ways that you build up relationships, comfortability, or rapport when you begin a workshop with new community members? Great question. There are a lot of um, preliminary meetings that happen before we even have that workshop. So actually our relationship with actually the idea to even start this project happened when we met Inocenta and that was a good five, six years before we even had our first workshop. Um, and sometimes it is uh, for Inocenta, it's going to her already having gatherings. So we would come to her youth workshops. She also had this really great elder circle that was primarily women. 
So I uh, came to a couple of those uh, sessions and got to know the women there and offered some games and exercises with them. Um, and then when it was time to actually open it up to a larger group, um, we chose, because we knew the community, you know, they were still unfamiliar with theater or if they thought of theater, they were like, oh, we're not actors. Even though we know that the community is incredibly talented, full of hams and jokers and people who could you could see singing from the churches. Um, but we knew that theater might, the, uh, the word theater might intimidate them. So we set up um, theater workshops or not theater workshops, sorry, storytelling workshops. And we also wanted to attract any other Pacific Islander um, actors in the islands as well. So we also set up an audition, but it just happened to be at the same time. <laughs> And it went that we both, we wanted, if we were working with experienced actors, we wanted to work with actors who would be willing to be challenged um, in their traditional Western theater training um, and not think of themselves as superior to the community participants, because the stories, like I said, was based on their stories. And so really they're walking in with their experience. And so therefore they are equally experts. And so I try to make sure that as soon as possible, we turn the table so that they feel like they're leading and we're just there to teach skills and craft that we know. And so then it becomes more of an equal exchange. Um, so it, it took us many years um, with any community to, to develop that relationship. Uh, I'll just add that uh, you, you, you go in with uh, respect Mm -hmm. with any community and and also like even when i'm doing one workshop uh i don't know these people sometimes they're strangers but when you go in there with uh, uh fervor to just really want to connect and also to offer and validate that uh they're important and they belong and that they have talents and skills i think that's how you are able to build strong relationships i mean uh, great question, Hannah, because um, I've worked with so many. I, we work uh, with uh, older generations. We've worked with grandmas and grandpas. <laughs> We've also worked with youth. Uh, and so as artists, we have to be able to almost, um, you know, be open to all these possibilities. So and going in with respect and the fact that to honor where they are at, wherever they may be, whatever skill level they are at you know, is the best part, because then you also, within working with them, uh, with participants, you get to see their growth, right, from the beginning to the end, kind of like the story of uh, my Cameroon friend, who started off, like, really razzled, but then in the end, you know, he, he came out just really connected with the community, so, yeah, thank you. Great question, Hannah, great, great question. Um, if I could, maybe, and if anybody else has questions, please put them in the chat um, and make sure to set it to all panelists. Um, but if I could do like an offshoot of that question, um, I'm wondering if you could talk about um, why theater, why theater is really good for this kind of kind of community building and creation and storytelling. Like, why is theater important to LA County, and why it is a great tool with to work with the communities that you work with. Because it's transformative. Because it's transformative from just being in this process from coming in together. I mean, think about it. You've got strangers who come in together in a room in a circle by the end of that workshop or that process, whether it be a week intensive or a show, you become a family. And so you build these connections and LA is so diverse. And for us to be able to come together and create something together and be able to contribute our individual strengths and learn even our own weaknesses is really transformative and powerful. So that's what for me um, is the importance of theater. And that's why I'm so, um, I, I, I see it can be healing and it can be very transformative and I've seen it through and through every time, every time to and through. So, I mean, I think for me, what is lost um, on the digital platform is that I walk into a room sensing with everything around uh, my whole body. I, I can sense is there tension over there? Is there laughter over there? 
I can smell, you know, what's the food in the air? What are the plants growing outside? Like the work of a theater artist includes all of our senses when you're in a room together. And I know it sounds strange after being quarantined forever, <laughs> breathing in others' energy seems so strange, but that's really important. That's what we do as theater artists. And when you're working with different cultures, um, a lot of that is how communities interact. And it's not just words, and it's not just how you say your words and your, your proficiency with the English language. It's how you communicate, how you touch each other's spirits. And that's what I get from theater. That's what I need from theater. Um, and that's what helps build these transformative performances um, and experiences. Any other questions? Thank you, Hannah and Mel B. We got some thank yous in the chat. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm, um, I guess we do have like oh, what is it? two more minutes. Um, um, <laughs> I, I wonder if we can close out. I guess um, I have one last thought, and maybe you guys can uh, you can yeah, yeah, also yeah. Um, talk about um, when we think about. Uh, when I think about like storytelling for social change, and from your presentation, I'm learning about kind of the, the build, the way you build communities and make connection here and a connection here, and then it becomes something else and just kind of see where it takes you. And I think there's a lot of things in the world that we feel like are very big problems. Um, but I think this like way of working bit by bit, making connections, just such a beautiful way to tackle a problem. And so I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that, particularly if you know we're feeling overwhelmed by big social problems that we wanna tackle and how you know the work that you do um, can kind of help us move through that. I for um, well, for example, the climate change um, story that I learned from working with this community and really getting a sense of what climate change really is going to mean for all of us, and it's already happening. Many of the influx of immigrants and migrants are a result of of climate change, of droughts happening, of waters rising, of the temperature of the ocean changing. Um, a lot of the islands are having to be evacuated, not necessarily um, because the island is already underwater, but that the water is risen enough to contaminate the freshwater artesian wells that most our volcanic islands have. Um, I don't know if people understand that when you get that Fiji water, it's this precious water that comes from an artesian well of a volcanic island. And when the water rises, that's what gets contaminated first. So then the islands can't be inhabitable. Um, anyway, let's try to give you hope. But um, <laughs> sorry. but I think that, that what's been important to me is for people to understand that climate change is more people in less area. Um, and we have to learn how to live with one in one another and how to understand each other and have compassion. And the only way we can do that and why I keep doing theater is to learn each other's stories. And I think sometimes, even when, especially when we were doing our project refugee nation, um, we were working with um, refugees from war who had come from a war that where they still hadn't identified what PTSD was. And so you were trying to get stories uh, from an elder generation who do not have the words for what is going on um, in their minds. And so we were very concerned that we would be re-triggering them or traumatizing them by asking them to tell us their stories of the past. Um, but then when we checked in with therapists and counselors like Carol Gomez, who's here on the thread, I see her. Thank you, Carol. Uh, for all PTV, you to know, baby, PTV program for uh, Victor and people like Carol have told us that one of the main things that they do is ask uh, their clients, what are your dreams? And a lot of times in those dreams, um, the trauma is played over and over and over again. And um, by telling us that stories, it gives them a little bit of release so that they don't have to keep re-traumatizing it. And hopefully um, we can help them with the healing. And we have seen it in our shows, especially when intergenerational um, families come to see our shows, uh, especially with, with, with Refugee Nation, uh, 
we heard a grandson going home with their grandparents and the grandparents be like, oh yeah, that happened to us. And suddenly all these stories of being in a refugee camp, being in a communist re-education camp, what they had to go through during the war just started pouring out of them after our show. And that's a type of healing. So for us, that's what it's about. It's, it's sharing stories can be part of the healing. And that's what keeps me passionate about this work. I think the intersections of so social justice and theater is, is just really important. Uh, one, one thing that really theater does really well is that it offers uh, you a different perspective, right? It offers you a perspective from uh, being a, uh, from the victim or the, the oppressor from, you know, this one specific community that is actually connected to the global world of how it impacts everyone. So to understand that we're all connected, I mean, you know, uh, I, I think about the journeys of all the many uh, asylees that I have worked with. And it's it's amazing the, the the resilience and and the trauma that they have had to go through just to get to this point. And for someone to share that to someone who doesn't who doesn't know that is really important. You know, so it gives you a different perspective. And I hope that that's for us the the the, the hope is that to share these stories and and as I say elevate and highlight the many um, you know issues that 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 are important. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, that was such a wonderful way to close out this wonderful presentation. We are at the end, unfortunately. Um, you know, we could hang out with you, you all all day. <laughs> but thank you so much for having us and allowing us to share this work. Of course. Thank you. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope you you all enjoy the program. I'm definitely very moved, and a lot of things will stay with me. So um, thank you so much, Leilana and Ova, for spending your time with us talking about all of your amazing work. Uh, check out Masters of Kearns. I put some info in the chat. Yeah, you did. I think it's in the chat there. <laughs> thank you. Yay. <laughs> thank you for, for being our, our behind the scenes uh, tech there. <laughs> it's important. Again, we don't do this alone, right? <laughs> That's another important thing about theater. <laughs> We may be the front, but you know, there's a lot of other people behind it. So thank you. Thank you, Katie. We can't hear you, Caroline. Oh, you're you're unmuted muted, or something. I, I muted know. myself. That's what it was. Okay. <laughs> um, before we end, I also wanted to mention that our spring and summer discovery program at the library has started. I'd like to invite you, your family, and your friends to participate in our annual celebration of reading, learning, and curiosity for people of all ages, going on now through August 8th. Uh, each, each month's challenges encourages you to log books you've read and complete activities. And every month you complete, you'll have an opportunity opportunity to win prizes. Uh, you can sign up online. I'll put the chat in the. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll put the link in the chat, or you can stop by your local library to pick up a game card and activity ideas. And if you're interested in participating in more of our upcoming virtual programs, please visit us at lacountylibrary.org. And with that, that concludes our program this evening. Thank you so much for joining us today, and have a good Good evening, everybody. Enjoy your LA County libraries. Go and borrow books and read books and videos and write and, and tell your stories because we love you. <laughs> Bye. Aloha, <laughs> mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Kapchai.